John Birch Society. Have you heard of him? You probably may have or may have not. It's been mentioned in music and all kinds of literature. Uh, but these people have a lot to do with your daily life and you're probably not even aware of it. So let's look into it. John Birch Society or the JBS is an American right-wing political advocacy group founded in 1958. It supports anti-communism and social conservatism. JBS is associated with ultra-conservative radical right or far-right politics. The Society's founder, businessman Robert Walsh Jr., developed the organization's infrastructure of nationwide chapters in December 1958. The society rose quickly in membership and influence and was controversial for its promotion of conspiracy theories and opposition to the civil rights movement. In the 1960s, conservative William F. Buckley Jr. and National Review pushed for the JBS to be exiled to the fringes of the American right. More recently, Jet Hur has argued that in the New Republic, that while the organization's influence peaked in the 1970s, Bircherism and its legacy of conspiracy theories have become the dominant strain in the conservative movement. Politico has asserted that JBS began making a resurgence in the mid-2010s, while the JBS has argued that it shaped the modern conservative movement, and especially the Trump administration. Writing in the Huffington Post, Andrew Reinbart called the JBS an intellectual seed bank of the right. Originally based in Belmont, Massachusetts, the JBS is now headquarters in Grand Chute, Wisconsin, a suburb of Appleton, Wisconsin, with local chapters throughout the United States. It owns the American Opinion Publish, Publishing, which publishes the magazine The New American. Political positions. The JBS supports limited government and opposes wealth redistribution and economic interventionism. It opposes collectivism, totalitarianism, archonism, and communism. It opposes socialism as well, which it asserts is infiltrating the US government administration. In 1983 edition of the political debate television program Crossfire, Congressman Larry McDonald, a conservative Democrat from Georgia, then the society's new appointed chairman, characterized it as belonging to the old right rather than the new right. The society opposes the and has an immigration review reduction view on the immigration reform. It opposes the United Nations, the North America Free Trade Agreement, the Central America Free Trade Movement, Free Trade Area of the Americas, and other free trade agreements. It argues the US Constitution has been devoured in favour of political and economic globalisation and that the alleged trend is not accidental. It has been cited the existence of the former Security and Prosperity Partnership as evidence of a push towards a North American Union. The JBS supports auditing and eventually dismantling the Federal Reserve. The JBS holds that the United States Constitution gives only Congress the ability to coin money and does not permit it to delegate this power or transform the dollar into fiat currency not backed by gold or silver. The JBS opposes modern day efforts to call Article V, Convention to pro Propose Amendments to the United States Constitution, advocating instead both putting pressure on Congress to follow the existing Constitution and using state nullification as outlined in Article V. Why? The JBS has been described as ultra-conservative, far-right and extremist. The Southern Poverty Law Center lists the society as a patriot group that advocates or adheres to extreme anti-government doctrines. By the 1990s, the JBS was perceived as more mainstream conservative than in the 1960s. The historian DJ Malloy wrote in 2014 that the JBS has served as a kind of bridge between the old right, including the MacArthurites of the 40s and the 50s, the new rights of the 70s and 80s, and the Tea Party right of the 21st century. It has also been associated with the libertarian movement. Origins. The John Birch Society was established in Indianapolis, India, Indiana, during a two-day session on December 8 and 9, 1958, by a group of 12 led by Robert, De Robert W. Welsh, Jr., a retired candy manufacturer from Belmont, Massachusetts, who had been a state Republican Party official and had run unsuccessfully in its 1950 lieutenant governor primary. 
1954, Welsh authored the first book about John Birch titled The Life of John Birch. He organised an anti-communist society to promote less government, more responsibility and a better world. He named his new organisation in memory of Birch, saying that Birch was an unknown but dedicated anti-communist, the first American casualty of the Cold War. Birch was an American Baptist missionary in China since the 1940s. During the World War II, he was a U.S. military intelligence officer under Brigadier General Kla Chenault in China. Chenault commanded the Flying Tigers and afterwards the U.S. Army Air Forces units in China. In April 1942, Birch helped Lieutenant Colonel Doolittle and his flight crew and other crews a few days after they bailed out of their B-52 bomber over Japanese-held territory in China. 16 B-25s led by Doolittle bombed Tokyo Doolittle raid off the Navy aircraft carrier USS Hornet during the United States' first attack on Japan. Beginning in July 1942, Birch, who spoke Chinese, became an Army intelligence officer. He operated alone or with the Nationalist Chinese soldiers and reg regularly risked his life in Japanese-held territory, China. His many activities included setting up China agent and radio intelligence works and rescuing drowned American pilots. He had two emergency aircraft runways built. Although he suffered from malaria, he rescued furloughs. In 1945, Birch was promoted to captain and began working in China for and with the OSS, the US Wartime Intelligence Service for in World War II. In August, after the Japanese surrendered, Birch was ordered by the OSS to northern China to get the surrender of the Japanese commanders at their installations. On August 24th, nine days after the war, Birch left by train with his party, which included two American soldiers, five Chinese officers, two Koreans who spoke Japanese. After spending a night in the village, the party proceeded by a handcar the next morning and ran into a group of 300 armed Chinese communists. Birch and his Chinese officer, Aiden, approached, were told to surrender their weapons and the group's equipment. Birch refused, and after arguing about it with their commander, they were allowed to proceed. Along the way, Birch's party encountered more groups of communists. The party arrived at the train station at Huang Ko, which was occupied by more Chinese communists. I'm sorry for saying that wrong. Birch requested to speak with their leader. Birch and his aide approached the group's leader after Birch refused to give up his cider. Both were beaten and shot. Birch's corpse was bayoneted. The rest of Birch's party were taken prisoner. Birch's aide survived and the prisoners were later released. Birch's remains were covered and a Catholic burial site service was held with the military honours on a hillside outside Shuhu's in eastern China. The Chinese communists who were active in northern China and Manchuria were supposedly World War II allies in, with the United States. Birch believed that Mao Zedong and the Chinese communists intended to take over China after the war, as they did in 1949, and move into Korea. The founding members of the JBS included Harry Lind Bradley, co-founder of the Allen Bradley Company, and Lindor and Harry Bradley Foundation, Fred C. Koch, founder of Koch Industries, Robert Waring Stoddard, president of y Wyman Gordon, a major industrial enterprise, another was Revivo Peely Oliver, a University of Illinois professor who was later expelled from the society and helped found the National Alliance. Koch became one of the organizer's primary financial supporters. According to an investigative journalist, Jane Meyer, Koch's son, David and Charles Koch, were also members of the JBS. However, both left it before the 1970s. A transcript of Welsh's two-day presentation at the founding meeting was published and as the blue book of John Birch Society and become a cornerstone of its belief. With each new member receiving a copy, according to Wells, both US and Soviet governments are controlled by the same figurative conspiratorial cable of internationalists, greedy bankers and corrupt politicians. If left unexposed, the traitors inside the US government would betray the country's sovereignty to the United Nations for a collective managed by a one world socialist government. Welsh saw collectivism as a main threat to Western culture and American liberals as secret communist traders. He provided cover for the gradual process of collectivism. With the ultimate goal of replacing the nations of Western civilization with a one world socialist government. There are many, many stages of welfareism. 
socialism and collectivism in general, he wrote, but communism is the ultimate state of them all, and they all lead inevitably in that direction. The JBS was organised to be, in Welsh words, under complete authoritative control at all levels. It incorporated aspects of business hierarchies and also the communist cells Welsh oppose, but whose disciplines he admired. Chapters 10 and Chapters of 10 to 20 members had each had a leader appointed from above and were expected to meet twice a month. Members of chapters that grew larger than 20 members were expected to break off and form a new small chapter. The activities of the JBS included distributing literature, pamphlets, magazines, videos, other material. The society was also sponsors to the Speakers Bureau, which invites speakers who are keenly aware of the movements that drive political policy. One of the first advocates of the society was get us out of membership of the UN campaign, which claimed in 1959 that the real, real nature of the UN is to build a one world government. Society also alleged that members of the UN supports were conducting an assault on Christmas to destroy religious beliefs and customs. In 1960s, Welsh advised the JBS members to join your local PTA. At the beginning of the school year, get your conservative friends to do likewise and go to work to take it over, one man's opinion. A magazine launched by Welsh in 1956 was renamed American Opinion and became the society's official publication. Society published New American bi-weekly magazine. 1960s. In the 1960s, the JBS was known as a right-wing organisation, an anti-communist ide ideology. By March 1961, the JBS had 60,000 to 100,000 members and, according to Welsh, a staff of 28 people in the Home Office, about 30 coordinators or major coordinators in the field who are fully paid as salary and expensive, and about 100 coordinators or section leaders, as they are called in some areas, who work on a volunteer basis as to all or part of their salary or expenses or both. According to the Political Research Association, a not-for-profit research group that investigates the far right, the Society pioneered grassroots lobbying, combining educational meetings, position drives and letter-writing campaigns. Rick Perlson described its main activity in the 1960s as monthly meetings to watch a film by Welsh, followed by writing postcards or letters to government officials linking specific policies to the communist menace. One early campaign against the second summit between the United States and the Soviet Union which urged President Dwight Eisenhower, if you go, don't come back, generated over 600,000 postcards and letters. According to the Society, in 1961, Welsh offered 2,300 prizes to college students for the best essays on grounds of impeachment of Chief Justice Warren, a prime target of the ultra-conservatives. The June 1964 Society campaign to expose Xerox corporate sponsorship of TV programs favourable to the UN produced 51,279 letters from 12,785 individuals. 1962, William F. Buckley Jr., editor of the National Review, an influential conservative magazine denounced Welsh and the John Birch Society as far removed from common sense and urged the GOP to purge itself from Welsh's influence. In the late 1960s, Welsh insisted that Johnson's administration fight against communism in Vietnam was part of the communist plot aimed at taking over the United States. Welsh demanded that the United States get out of Vietnam, thus aligning society with the left. The society opposed water fluoridation, which it calls mass medicine. The JBS was moderately active in the 1960s with numerous chapters, but rarely engaging in coalition building with other conservatives. It was rejected by most conservatives because of Welsh's conspiracy theories. The philosopher Anne Rand said in the 1964 Playbook interview, I consider the Birch Society futile because they are not for capitalism, but merely against communism. I gather that they believe the disastrous state of the today's world is caused by the communist conspiracy. This is childish, naive and superficial. No country can be destroyed by a mere conspiracy. It can be destroyed by only ideas. Former Eisenhower cabinet member, this guy, a leading Mormon, 
spoke in favour of the JBS, but in January 1963, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints issued a statement distancing itself from the society. Anti-Semitic, racist, anti-Mormon, anti-Masonic groups criticised the organisation's acceptance of Jews, non-whites, Masons and Mormons as members. These opponents accused Welsh of harbouring feminist, American The evolutionary ideas. Welsh rejected these accusations by his detractors. All we are interested in here is opposing the advancement of the communists and eventually destroying the whole communist conspiracy so that the Jews and Christians alike, the Mohammedans and the Buddhists, can again have a decent world in which to live. In a 1963 report, the California Senate Fact-Finding Subcommittee of UN American Activities following the investigation into the JBS found no evidence it is a secret fascist, subversive, un-American or anti-Semitic organisation. 1964, Welsh favoured Barry Goldwater for the Republican presidential nomination, but the membership split, with two-thirds supporting Goldwater and one-third supporting Richard Nixon, who did not run. A number of Birch members and their allies were Goldwater supporters in 1964, and some were delegates at the 1964 Republican National Convention. JBS opposed the 1960s civil rights movement and claimed that the movement had communists in important positions. In the later half of 1965, JBS produced a flyer called What's Wrong with Civil Rights and used the flyer as newspaper advertisement. In a piece, one of the answers was, for the civil rights movement in the United States and all with its all growing agitation and riots and bitterness and the insidious steps towards the appearance of a civil war, has not been infiltrated by the communists, so, as you frequently hear, has been deliberately and almost wholly created by the communists, patiently building up to present present stage for more than 40 years. The society believed that the ultimate aim of the civil rights movement was the creation of the Soviet Negro Republic in the southeastern United States and opposed the Civil Rights Act of 1964, claiming it violated the Tenth Amendment of the United States Constitution and overstepped individual states' rights to enact laws regarding civil rights. Some prominent black conservatives, such as George Shuler and Manning Johnson, joined forces with JBS during this period and echoed the society's rhetoric, rhetoric about civil rights movements and civil rights acts of 1964. In April 1966, the New York Times article on New Jersey and Society voiced in part a concern from the increasing tempo of radical right attacks on local government, libraries, school boards, parent teacher association, mental health programs, the Republican Party, and most recently the Umical movement. It was then characterized by society as by the far most successful and respectable radical right organization in the country. It operates alone or in support of other extremist organizations whose major preoccupation like that of the Birches, is the international, internal communist conspiracy of the United States. The JBS also opposed the creation of the first sex education curriculum in the United States through a division called the Movement to Restore Decency. Surviving Moto Red pamphlets dated from 1967 to 71. Eisenhower issue. Welsh wrote in a widely circulated 1954 statement, the Politicon, could Eisenhower really be simply a smart politician, entirely without his principles and hungry for glory, who is only a tool from the communists? The answer is yes. He went on with regards to Eisenhower. It is difficult to avoid raising the question of deliberate treason. The controversial photograph was removed before the final publication of the political. The sensationalism of Welsh's changes against Eisenhower prompted several conservatives and Republicans, mostly prominent Goldwater and intellectuals of William F. Buckley's circle, to renounce outright or quietly shun the group. Buckley was an early friend and admirer of Welsh, regarded his accusations against Eisenhower as paranoid and idiotic libs, an attempt to unsuccessfully purge Welsh from the Birch Society. From then on, Buckley became the leading intellectual spokesman an organiser for the anti-virtue conservatives. 
Buckley's biographer, John B. Judas, wrote that Buckley was beginning to worry that with the John Birch Society growing so rapidly, the right-wing upsurge in the country would take an ugly, even fascist turn rather than leading towards the kind of conservative national review had promoted. The book found support from Zara Tuff Benson, then Eisenhower's Secretary of Agriculture, and later the 13th President of the Latter-day Saints Church. In a letter to his friend, FBI Chief J. Edgar Hoover, Benson asked, how can a man, Eisenhower, who seems to be so strong for Christian principles and base American concepts, be so effectively used as a tool to serve the communist conspiracy? Benson privately fought to prevent the Bureau from condemning the JBS, which prompted Hoover to distance himself from Benson. At one point in 1971, Hoover directed his staff to lie to Benson to avoid having to meet with him about the issue. 1970s. The JBS was at the centre of free speech law case in the 1970s after American opinion accused Chicago lawyer Emil Goetz, who was representing the family of a young milk cute man killed by a police officer, for being part of a communist conspiracy to merge all police agencies in the country into one large force. The resulting lib suit, Goetz vs. Robert Welsh, INC, reached the United States Supreme Court, which had held that the state may allow a private figure such as Goetz to recover actual damages from media defendant without providing malice, but that a public figure does not have to prove actual malice. According to the standard laid out in New York Times, in order to recover presumed damages or punitive damages, the court ordered a reach on which Goetz prevailed. Key causes of the JBS in the 1970s included opposition to both Occupational, Self and Haste, Health, Occupational Self, Safety and Health Administration and to the establishment of the diplomatic ties with the People's Republic of China. The JBS claimed in 1973 that the regime of Mao Zedong had murdered 64 million Chinese as of that year and it had been the primary supplier of elite heroin to the United States. This led to bumper stickers showing a pair of scissors cutting a hypodermic needle in half, accompanied by the slogan, Cut the Red China Connection. The society was opposed to transferring control to the Panama Canal from America to Panamanian sovereignty. The JBS Society, along with other conservative groups such as Eagle Forum and the Christian Right, successfully opposed the Equal Rights Amendment in the 1970s. JBS accused the ERA's supporters of subversion, asserting that the ERA was part of a communist plot to reduce human beings to living at the same level as animals. In the 1970s, the JBS played a prominent role in promoting the false claim that Lachetai was a cancer cure, and in advocating for the legislation of the compound as a drug, the New York Times Review in 1977 found identified JBS and other far-right groups were involved in pro lateral campaigns in at least nine states. Virtually all of the Office of the Committee for Freedom and Choice in Cancer Therapy, the leading pro-group where JBS members, Congressman and the Birch Society leader Lawrence P. MacDonald was involved in the campaign as a member of the committee. JBS also opposed Earth Day, suggesting that it was a communist plot and noting that the first celebration fell on the 100th anniversary of Lenin's birth. JBS was organised into local chapters during the period. Ernest Bronsag, a New Jersey regional coordinator, claimed that it was virtually impossible for all opponents of the society to penetrate its policy-making levels, thereby protecting it from anti-American takeover attempts. Its activities included the distribution of literature, cri critical of civil rights legislation, warnings over the influence of the United Nations, and the release of petitions to impeach United States Supreme Court Justice Earl Warren. To spread their message, members held showings of documentary films and operated initiatives such as Let Freedom Ring, a nationwide network of recorded telephone messages. After Welsh, after the Vietnam War, the JBS membership and influence declined. This decline continued through the 1980s and 1990s due to Welsh's death in 1985 and in the end of the Cold War in 1991. By the middle of the 1990s, membership in the JBS was estimated between 15,000 and 20,000. 
while other anti-communist organisations faded away following the Cold War's end. The JBS survived and even experienced a newfound energy and growth in the 90s. The society campaigned against the ratification of Genocide Convention, arguing it would erode US national sovereignty. The JBS continues to press for an end to United States membership of the United Nations, nations as evidence of effectiveness of JBS evidence efforts. The Society points to the Utah State's legislature failed resolution calling for the United States withdrawal as well as the actions of several other states where the Society memberships have been active. Since its founding, the Society has repeatedly opposed United States military intervention overseas, although it strongly supports the American military. It, also, it has issued calls to bring our troops home in every conflict since its founding, including Vietnam. The Society is also as national speakers committee called the American Opinion Speakers Bureau and an anti-tax committee called the Tax Reform immediately. The second hand of the JBS was Congressman Larry McDonald from Georgia. McDonald's first wife estimated that over the years he had hosted 10,000 people in his living room from the Bircher inspired lectures and documentaries. In 1982 McDonald was appointed as the national chairman of the society. McDonald was killed in 1983 when an airliner was shot down by a Soviet interceptor. Mm, how convenient. William P. Hall had been active as a writer for the JBS. He is noted for very strong attacks on mainstream politicals, politicians, from Franklin D. Roosevelt to George W. Bush. He publishes regularly in the New American and its predecessor, American Opinion. He co-authored the Clinton Critic with Larry Abraham, alleging that Clinton was part of an Anglo-American conspiracy supposed to rule through the Council of Foreign Relations and the Trilateral Commission. The Birch Society's publication arm, Western Ireland, published the Architects of Conspiracy. Sorry, I lost myself. The Birch Society's publication arms, Western Ireland, published his Architects of Conspiracy and Intriguing History, 1984. Hunting and House published publicities, handouts and Pickpockets, our government gone berserk in 1996. In the mid-2000s, the JBS, along with Eagle Forum, mobilised conservative opposition to the so-called North American Union and the Security and Prosperity Partnership of North America. As a result of two organisation activities, 23 state legislators saw bills introduced condemning an NAU while the Bush and Obama administrations were deterred for, from any grand initiatives. Okay, 2009 to present. JBS was a co-sponsor of the 2010 Conservative Political Action Conference, ending its decades-long split with mainstream conservative movement. Although JBS membership and numbers are kept private, it has reported a resurgence of members during the Donald Trump presidency, specifically in Texas. The organization's goal in Texas include opposition to the UN's agenda based on a that it will establish control over all human activity and the opposition to the bill that would allow people who enter the United States illegally to pay in state tuition for state, Texas state colleges. The JBS has been associated with the Trump presidency by political commentators such as Jet Herr, now of The Nation magazine, who argued while writing for The New Republic in June 26 that 16 that Trumpism is essentially Birchism. Trump Confederate and a longtime advisor Roger Stone said that Trump's father, Fred Trump, was a financier of the JBS and a personal friend of the founder of Rubbish Wealth. Trump's former chief of staff, Mick McCulvey, was a speaker at JBS Society's National Con Council dinner shortly before joining the Trump administration. U.S. Senator Rand Paul, Republican in Kentucky, widely reported to be one of Trump's top advisors on foreign policy, is also tied to the JBS. The Senator's father, former Congressman Ron Paul, has had a long and very close relationship with the JBS, celebrating the work in his 2008 keynote speech at its 50th anniversary event and saying that the JBS was had a long... Um, so leading the fight to restore freedom. The keynote speaker in the organization's 60th anniversary celebration was Congressman Thomas Massey. 
Republican Kentucky, who maintains that a near perfect score on the JBS Freedom Index ranking of members of Congress. Right wing conspiracy theorist Bill Hicks, who hosted <coughs> Trump on his InfoWars radio stream and claims to have personal relationship with the president, called Trump a JBS president and previously claimed Trump was more John Birch Society than John Birch Society. In July 2021, the Republican Central Committee of Coutini County, Ohio, Idaho, and Benoit County, Idaho, sorry for saying these wrong, unanimously approved the resolutions calling JBS a valuable organization that is detected to restoring, dedicated to restoring the Republic according to the version, vision of the Founding Fathers. The Idaho Republican Party declined to endorse the resolutions. Okay, officers, chairmen and presidents, Robert Welsh, Jr., 58 to 83, Larry McDonald, 83, U.S. representative who was killed in a shoot-down incident by the Russians, Robert W. Welsh, Jr., again, Charles R. Almer, John F. McManus, G. Vance Smith, John F. McManus, Ray Clark, Martin Olson, CEOs G. Allen Bublitz, G. Vance Smith, Arthur R. Thompson, and Bill Han. I think he's the current president of it. In popular culture, Peter Seeger lampooned the John Bur Sorry, Peter Seeger lampooned the John Birch Society with a song called The Jack Ash Society. Recorded in his 1961 Folkways LP album Gazette, Volume 2. The name is pun. On the surface, it's changing the name from one type of tree, birch, to another, ash. However, the name Jack Ash also sounds like the word jackass, which means a foolish person. In 1962, Bob Dylan recorded Talkin' John Birch Paranoid Blues which poked fun at the society and its tendency to see communist conspiracies in many situations. When he attempted to perform it on the Ed Sullivan Show in 1963, however, CBS Standards and Practices Department forbade it, fearing that lyrics equating the society's views of those of Adolf Hitler might trigger a defamation lawsuit. Dylan was offered the opportunity to perform a different song, but he responded that if he could not sing the number of his choice, he would rather not appear at all. The story generated widespread media attention in the days that follow. Sullivan devounced the network's decision and published interviews. In 1962, the Chad Mitchell trio recorded a satirical song, The John Birch Society, which made its way to number 99 on the Billboard Hot 100. The 1973 song, An Easy Rider by Charlie Daniels, contains a reference to brother John Birch in the lyrics. In 2020, American journalist Robert Evans released a multi-part series on his podcast Behind the, Look, Behind the Bastards entitled How the John Birch Society Invented the Modern Far Right. Cool. So, if you're with me, uh, thank you. Um, yeah, I appreciate it. And I just want to say thank you to all these new subscribers out there. And I appreciate your, appreciate your support to get to 2,000 subscribers. I'm noticing that I've been unsubscribed to a lot of the people that I subscribe. So if you don't mind, can you just please check to see that you are subscribed? And if you've been unsubbed, can you please resub? I've had a lot of subscribers removed and it's frustrating. So thank you very much for all your support. Hit the like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Raise your vibrations. You have a fantastic day and good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Much love. Bye now.